Right, this is section 8.3, page 1112 onwards to 114. I'll probably take two videos over this. Here's a couple of questions for um, the first section of this part. So, let's just work in blue, that's cool. Right, it says this question 3, page 113. The graph shows the distance of a train from Manchester in kilometres. So, what have we got here? Um, that is zero kilometres from Manchester. So at the moment we're 50 kilometres from Manchester. By the time we finish, we're only 10 kilometres from Manchester. In other words, this journey is about coming on a train to Manchester, rather going on a train to Manchester. And there's some some information there that might help us. I might ignore it completely. So uh, is that all right? So nine o'clock in the morning, I'm 50 kilometres from Manchester. At 9:10 in the morning, I'm 30 from Manchester. At 9, let's have a look, what have I got here? 5. At 9.25, I'm 10 kilometres from Manchester. That's, that's basically it. Now, if that's the story that you're reading as I'm reading, then we can go ahead and do the questions without too much trouble. It says, find the speed of the train at 9.05. Well, look at it carefully. That's 9.05. Going up in five minute blocks, so it's quite a, a friendly graph. You may as well fill in the rest. We may or may not need it, so put it in any way, could be useful. Yeah, 9.25, 9.30, so it's a half an hour um, journey, it would seem, or at least half an hour is represented on the x-axis, the time axis, and uh, the distance on the y-axis is given to us there. So, find the speed of the train at 9.05. Well, you know speed equals distance divided by time. Well, if I, we can see that at 9.05, we're represented by this line here from A to B. Now A to B represents a time interval of 10 minutes. So that's all 10 minutes from there to there. And the distance covered will be from 50 down to 30. So we get nearer to Manchester, remember? So that's essentially 20 kilometers. So let's just work out speed equals distance over time. I'll fit what I can here. So quote the formula, speed equals distance divided by time, show me the numbers, 20 kilometers divided by, now 10 minutes is one sixth of an hour, isn't it? So because there's six lots of 10 minutes in 60 minutes, so so we got 120 kilometers divided by one sixth of an hour. Remember this is the higher paper, I know it's only grade C. Um, so essentially uh, 20 divided by one sixth will be 20 times six, Remember when you divide by fractions, you flip over and multiply. Essentially, that's 120 kilometers per hour. Now you think on that. What is the speed of the train between the points marked B and C? Oh, let's just do it then. Same sort of thing, what's the time interval? From B to C, I've gone from 9.10 to 9.25. Essentially, that's 15 minutes. And the distance I covered was, again, 20 kilometers. So let's just work it out again. Speed equals distance over time. I'll try and make it fit here. Uh, that belongs to that one. Now I'm doing this one. So speed equals distance over time. The distance I covered was 20 kilometers divided by 15 minutes which is essentially a quarter of an hour. Is that alright? And therefore 20 divided by one quarter is 80 kilometers per hour. And that should be hours there. All right, very easy. Now, Adam says that the train is traveling at a constant speed between C and D. Is Adam correct? Right, at C, I'm 10 kilometers away from Manchester and the time is 9.25. At D, I'm still 10 kilometers away from Manchester and the time is 9.30. So what's happened? Um, five minutes has gone on and I'm no nearer to Manchester. The train is stationary. What's the reason for it? After five minutes, the train is no nearer to Manchester. So I haven't really got space to write that, but don't just say the train is stationary, because, uh, and then just quote these things. At sea, the time is 9.25, and the train is 10 kilometers from Manchester. And at D, the time is now 9.30 and still 10 kilometers away from Manchester. Therefore, the train is stationary. All right, give a little bit more evidence. Now, Bev. Now, Bev says that the train is going downhill until it gets to C. 
is Bev correct? Explain your answer. Well, in truth, we, I explained in the beginning that we're actually going towards Manchester. It doesn't mean to say the train is travelling downhill towards Manchester. It may well be. We do not know. So first thing is, cannot tell. But the train is travelling let's get the mark towards Manchester All right. so it gives the impression that it's coming downhill it's not rather than being a graph that goes away from somewhere here we're coming towards somewhere and we finish up 10 kilometers away from Manchester City on the platform there now calculate the average speed of the train between points A and C uh, in other words from that point to that point how long have we got here I've got plenty of space to do this so speed equals distance divided by time. What is the distance between A and C? Just read back. Right, so I've got from 50 away down to 10 away. I've basically gone 40 kilometers. And I need to divide that by how long? It, from 9 o'clock to 9.25 is 25 minutes. I will write down 25 minutes here. Now, as an aside, let's just convert these minutes into parts of an hour. So if I take 25 minutes and divide that by 60 minutes, as you can see I have a fraction of an hour. So I can actually do this, can't I? So I've got 40 kilometers divided by 25 over 60. Now of course when you divide by fractions, you flip it over and multiply. So that will give me 40 times 60 all over 25 and straight away that will give me kilometers per hour. Now I'm going to grab my calculator because I'm allowed to do that. 40 times 60 divide that by 25 in one step that gives me 96 kilometers per hour. Alright, lovely question. Um, at least grade C. I now do question 4 right here. Quite like this question this has been given a grade B rating right go monkey this is question four go monkey go monkey is a company that makes playground resources for teenagers I'm sure I could use it as well I might break it though one of their products is a rope bridge there it is a bit dark on the screen there it goes so these are a couple of teenagers or well, four of them by the look of it maybe five walking across the bridge I wouldn't do that it's too scary too high and it's obviously sagging in the middle where they're walking so there you go great activity for teenagers who are feeling brave one of their products is a rope bridge excuse me the equation for the curve of the rope is y equals x bracket x minus 20 all divided by 100 this is out of order this bit you divide this part by 100 not the y so I'm now going to take the liberty of rubbing it out with my white attachment. That's the equation. You don't, you don't divide y by 100. That's it. All right. So I've just corrected that for, for you in this book. Back to blue. We're right in there and calculated that y is actually minus 0.75 meters. In other words, y is below the point A. Uh, if I substitute 10 in there, I worked that earlier. Put a 10 in there and a 10 in there. 10 take away 20 is minus 10. Uh, 10 times minus 10 is minus 100. Minus 100 divided by 100 is minus 1. It didn't need a calculator for that one. And for the next one, you just substitute 15 there and there. And what I'm going to do is just get my answer straight away, save me eating up a lot of time. It actually comes to minus 0 0.75. And when x is 20, clearly 20 take away 20 is 0, it makes this entire value of y 0. So that's that. As you can see, we're sort of sagging like that. Copy the axes below and plot the points from the table and draw a smooth curve. Well, I'll try. I think I'll use the ready-made curve from the book. Well, the point zero zero is there. 5 minus 0.75 is, let's try and do this, 2, 4, 6, 8. So 0.75 is going to be roughly here. And when we're 10 meters away from A or B, we're going to sag minus 1 meter. 15, it's going to be about there, minus 0.75 and 20 is 0. So let's just draw a really smart looking curve. So let's just aim a little bit, let's just have a go, come on. Take it down, round. Oh, this is hard, isn't it? This is for me. Right, that's that curve then. Don't worry that it overhangs there and there, not a problem. 
So I've done it. Now Javier says that the lowest point below the end is halfway along and is two meters below the level of end A. Is he correct? Uh, no, he's not, is he? Because look, we're only one meter below the point A. Now A would be there and B would be there, wouldn't it, I think? Yeah. So we're dropping only one meter there. So what have we got? So no, it is halfway, but only drops one meter below A. Okay, so I've explained it because I've highlighted the point just there, and uh, that can match my response to part C. I'm going to stop the video there and uh, plan the next couple and uh, that deserves some more attention because it's a little bit tricky for what I've seen going forward.